tell your story. Change the conversation. Organized by students. TEDx Youth at SHC. I was five years old when I experienced the first major death in my life. My parents called me over to this little loft area that we had in our house. I was super excited and I ran up to them because they never let me into that loft. But this excitement vanished as soon as I walked into the room. My mom's eyes were red and my dad just wouldn't look at me. So I plopped down between them and after a few moments of tense silence, they started talking. But I don't remember anything that they said, just the effect of it all. I was five years old when my parents sat me down for the divorce talk. Now, neither divorce nor death are objective experiences. They're not something that I can universalize for you. But the thing about death is that it's inevitable. We all experience it, and that's terrifying for most of us. We can't control it. But just the same to a child, divorce is not something that we have control over. When my parents began the road to divorce, they grieved, I grieved, and the people around us grieved with and for us. They offered a sympathetic hug here, a shoulder pat there, and they offered endless condolences and apologies. But these helpless I'm sorry's just echoed around my head. Unlike death, though, my family received no funeral. There was no ceremony to honor what had existed before the split, to commemorate the memory of what was. Because in a way, Divorce is the death of a family, the death of a relationship. But that's not something that many people find an easy thing to celebrate. When my parents got divorced, there was a pile of broken pieces where my family used to exist. Everything that I, everything that I had ever known simply came crashing to the ground, and it left in me a hole bigger than any death that I had ever experienced. But after the initial sympathies flowed in, a shadow befell our tragedy. It became nothing more than a dark moment in the past for most people. But this simply was not my reality. Divorce is dynamic. It isn't just some dark speck on a timeline or a low point in the past. No, it flows in and out of the light of consciousness and it threatens to, to rear its ugly head at any given moment. So not exactly knowing how to deal with divorce because I hadn't experienced it before, I tried to cope with this the way that I knew how, like I would have for a death. I mean, after all, I felt helpless and out of control and scared. So, but as a result of not being able to control this aspect of my life, I subconsciously found ways to control other aspects of my life. In middle school, this began to manifest in the form of severe OCD and something bordering on a guilt complex. I began apologizing compulsively for everything and anything at all, and every other word out of my mouth was sorry. It could have been for the simplest of things, like accidentally looking the wrong way during a test, or tripping over myself in the hallway, or taking an extra sticker from the dentist's office. My mom noticed, and she put me into this group therapy. They called it a worry group, but see, there's a slight problem with putting a worrisome, anxious, and shy kid in a room full of other worrisome, anxious, and shy kids and telling them to spill their feelings to each other. Let me give you a hint. It doesn't really work. In fact, it may have made things a little bit worse because after this, I retreated further into myself and I began to apologize more for that. But as luck would have it, my teacher who I was a little bit afraid of at the time, she noticed, and she pulled me aside during lunch one day. She asked me why I apologized so often, and when I couldn't give her an answer and tried to apologize for that, she just stopped me and she said, it's okay. <sighs> Whether my teacher talked to me that day out of pity or annoyance or concern didn't really matter. What mattered to me was that she simply talked to me at the time, most of my teachers were aware of the fact that my parents were divorced, but neither they nor most of the other people in my life seemed to care much. Or if they did, they didn't really try to understand or to talk to me about any of it. 
I imagine their thought process was somewhere along the lines of, everyone's divorced, it's really not that big of a deal. But the difference with the teacher that spoke to me was that she didn't simply dismiss the way that I'd been acting to the fact that I had divorced parents. She didn't baby me or try to give me sympathy out of discomfort or pity. No. Instead, she noticed that something about me just was not okay. She offered me empathy instead. She embraced the difficult talk that no one else seemed to want to have with me. She helped me to notice that I was not okay and that it is okay not to be okay. When I was younger, I never really understood this. I mean, I grew up knowing that it was just as common for a child to come from a family with divorced parents as it was for them to come from a healthy family. So it was kind of just accepted as a normal scene society, right? And as a result of this and not wanting to be seen as too emotional or too sensitive, I often started telling myself, maybe I can just control the way that I act. I mean, their divorce is in the past, right? And I can't control their marriage, but I can control the way that I feel about it and how I deal with it, right? Well, clearly I couldn't because all of these feelings of shame and guilt and sadness and confusion, they just, they turned toxic inside of me. And for me, they manifested as OCD, compulsive apologies, and later, depression. And surprise, I still struggle a lot with these things today. Actually, I struggle a lot with the divorce, far more than I'd ever like to admit. These wounds left in us by divorce or death or any kind of tragedy, they may never fully heal. Sometimes something will happen, big or small, and these wounds will reopen and we'll feel like we've just had the wind knocked out of us. So when this happens, remember that it's okay. It's okay to feel sorry or out of control, to feel everything or anything at all, or to feel everything or nothing at all. Because guys, it's okay not to be okay. Thank you.